These divers are warriors in an underwater battle. It's a, a really dire and bad situation. Their weapons, hammers and brushes, and science. We wouldn't exist without coral reefs. And if we allow it to degrade and go away, we're going to see uh, consequences throughout the planet. The coral reefs here have been decimated by disease, by heavy human use, and now rising ocean heat. We have lost since the 1980s almost 97% of our coral coverage, um, which is crazy fast. Biologist Celia Lito and Zach Craig are part of a rescue mission preparing the reefs for rebirth with new corals. Engineered onshore at Moat Marine Laboratory. We have kind of like an IVF clinic in here. So we have our parent colonies, and then we have a fertilization area over here, and then we have a nursery for the babies behind us. These Elkhorn coral are broodstock, fed daily and nurtured in a tank which replicates their seasonal cycle until they're ready for once a year spawning. There's a lot of challenges. First of all, just the timing of when they actually reproduce. It usually happens around the full moon in August, so it actually occurs in the middle of the night and at the peak of hurricane season. Wow. Full moons and hurricanes. <laughs> yeah, very romantic. <laughs> if full moons work their magic, the baby corals grow while Celia and her team explore which types of corals survive climate stress and disease better. Something called resiliency screening that allows us to see how their genetics um, will essentially act out in a real world situation. So our overarching goal is still just to create as much genetic diversity as we can because that process, the natural reproductive process, is not occurring on coral reefs in the wild anymore. Once they're mature enough, the babies graduate outside to one of 80 tanks. Each can hold up to a thousand coral. Next, they're fragmented or cut into tinier pieces to grow faster until they're ready for the ocean reef. Scientists are convinced that reefs are at a tipping point. So multi-million dollars are being pumped into mission iconic reefs. So this project is really exciting. Led by the U.S.'s National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, or NOAA, Katie Lesneski is a marine biologist who's managing the project. So we will be restoring about 50 American football field sides of coral reefs over the next 20 years, and that will involve about a half a million individual corals. Timely and urgent with rising sea temperatures. Earlier this year, we found that the global sea surface temperature average is at the highest it's ever been in recorded history, which is quite alarming. And why are we predicting that it will go even higher? Yes, so this year is expected to be an El Nino year, and in particular in the Caribbean, when that is the climate pattern, we see an increase in the potential for coral bleaching due to those increased temperatures. Conditions are ripe for another problem, nuisance algae, which can smother the coral. So to prepare the reef, scientists have to tackle that too. And here's their weapon. Whoa. So this is a big male. The Caribbean king crab, easy to breed, voracious and not picky. There are little guys that go out and weed our coral garden on the reef. They eat a lot of algae. The crabs that we're looking at here are a very effective grazer, and by removing that algae, they reduce the competition between algae and coral. The Ecologist coral. Dr. Jason Spadaro manages the reef restoration program. They eat more algae than just about any other herbivore in the system, even stuff that's calcified and, and chemically defended, really nasty stuff that's very difficult to get rid of. These guys will go to town on it. One female can produce five to six times a year with each clutch numbering hundreds of eggs. Within a year, divers will start to add hundreds of thousands of juvenile crabs to the reefs to help those corals survive. The battle out here is a sign our oceans are critically out of balance. Restoration is a massive project and it can feel daunting. Celia calls it eco-doom. 
it is an enormous problem, and it is no problem that any single person or organization can take on. Um, and it can it can cause you to kind of spiral a little bit because you're like, oh my gosh, this is so big and I'm so small. Like, how can you possibly make a difference? But for these young scientists, field work is the antidote. So they started out as about a square centimeter in size, and they've since grown. So we are actually going to plant these guys in clusters of four. And each cluster is going to be a tight cluster, so they're going to be really close together so they can fuse together rapidly. Operation Outplant is now underway on Luke Key. Those baby corals raised in tanks are about to start their own colonies down below. All right, Celia, ready? This project, Mission Iconic Reefs, is the largest coral restoration project in the world. And scientists are going to be monitoring this coral for years. Even with the degradation, underwater is a magical place. Zach has mapped out exactly where the clusters will go. Each with its own identifying tag. They massage a ball of epoxy to secure the coral pox to the reef. It's piecemeal work, backed up by years of advances in marine science. Some of the earlier plantings are thriving, some are not. The damage already done will take decades to recover. Celia and Zach are wrapping up today's mission, giving coral colonies a fighting chance to reproduce again, naturally on the reef. This is where we do our best work and we're slowly but surely making great, great um, work in the right direction, which is really reassuring. Successful planting? I would say so, yeah. <laughs> they look really happy. The previous outplants out there, um, they're growing from the last time they were out there. And then now we just added those new ones, which are a little bit smaller, but I think they'll be, be happy out there. <laughs> have a happy new home. Yes, <laughs> a very nice home too. <laughs> it's a beautiful reef. A good day's work. It's really hard to turn away from those pictures. Can you just pull back the curtain a little bit in terms of how you got that? Well, between the dive team and our team, we had four GoPros on the go, so we put them on long, six-foot-long poles and plunged them down into the reef, only we couldn't see exactly what we were shooting. But another diver had one on his chest and one secured to the reef at the bottom, so we were able to capture the detail, uh, the beauty and the engineering of this amazing outplanting on that reef. And it's really important to see it to understand it. One thing I'm curious about is that the threat of a warming ocean isn't going away. So why is this year particularly significant? Not at all. I mean, we have been talking about that, haven't we? El Nino is confirmed. It is developing this summer, will strengthen into the fall and the winter. It could bring both drought and flooding, warming oceans and possibly more coral bleaching. So that's the threat. We don't know how severe it will be. All right, Susan Orson, thank you. You're welcome.